Hello, and welcome to another of our Maker's Place X Whale interviews. Uh, joining us today, we have a very special guest and fabulous friend of whale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good to have you, Ying Lu. Um, she is the creator of the Twitter whale. Uh, dumpling and boba emojis. There's so many of her pieces that have touched various corners of pop culture recently, and it is an absolute honor to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Candy. I'm so happy to be here with you all. And so tell us, I know that you've been here with the whale community for a while, creating various pieces and also creating many NFT drops. Um, what are we looking at today? What is the next step here? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so today we're looking at the job that's going to come up tomorrow on the 4th of November. Uh, at noon uh, EST, uh, Eastern Time, and uh, 3 uh, actually 12.30 EST, and uh, 3.30 uh, West Coast Time. And the name of the job, uh, the collection, is called The Luminary by Yi Ying Lu. It's kind of a play of my last name, Lu, and also Luna. And it is a, a really interesting sort of uh, interplay of the signs, the symbols, the meaning that we interpret graphics and it's also the first time i'm actually doing something to feature human in a 2d form as a nft because normally i work with animals and nature um, but this one is particularly special because this job is really kind of featuring female energy in some way um, and you know the whole drop is honoring um honoring women but in the same time, honoring um, the feminine energy and the moon and the intuition. <laughs> and what an amazing inspiration you have here. Like having, I like just looking at the preview, I am super, super excited to see the art of the drop and to see having, having your inspiration, you know, be the moon goddess here and all of the different emotions that colors can invoke. This is magical. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope so. And yeah, I am really excited to um, release this job because it, it's very different than the previous NFT works I've released. So, um, and I'm, and, and there's also a very magical tie-in with today's mode the host candy <laughs> we will reveal later on <laughs> like it's obviously this is this is meant to be and we are super excited to explore all of the creations that you're going to share with us because this drop you know as we can see you know, it's it's described as whimsical and imaginary and playful which is absolutely my vibe and something that i I'm really excited to see you bring into the space more because, you know, we're looking at a lot of the art that's created and having that good balance of, you know, the whimsy and the carefree and kind of the joy in the space. It's, it's amazing to be able to bring that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You just sum it up t so perfectly because it's also something I really want to kind of highlight, which is the, you know, the space right now, obviously, we uh, we have increasingly um, global presence of NFT, NFT artists. Uh, one thing I do want to highlight is, you know, also encourage more women, female, um, whether collectors or um, artists or just people who are interested and curious about um, blockchain art and NFT to be more engaging in the space, um, but also you know, as you can see in the space, we have a lot of jobs that are doing 3D, which is really exciting. Um, personally, I love flat colors. I love typography. And I love just the power of very simple uh, graphics and sometimes just a very simple symbol. Um, it has very strong symbology or meaning that our mind can interpret. 
And I want to kind of bring that experience just through very simple shapes and geometric uh, composition. And it's kind of a visual journey uh, to take people through. So um, so excited to share with you the detail. And Candy, please ask me anything. I'll be very happy to share some of my inspiration and also the creative process behind these jobs. Absolutely. So one of the comments, actually, as our community is watching the stream in Discord, um, Lenny had noticed that it feels like it's inspired by the Chinese Autumn Festival story with the bunny on the moon. So perhaps talking about your inspirations would be a good next step here since it's being thought about in the chat right now. Absolutely. Yeah, you got it right. I am so glad that you found this. It's really interesting. Um, uh, actually, uh, Candy, let me share my screen so that I can walk people through um, the actual uh, inspiration of the jobs. Um, start it with the moon goddess because this was and is always be um, my, my inspiration. But it was particularly interesting because we had the Autumn Moon Festival this year, which is two months ago. And it just so happened that um, the Makers Place first ever virtual um, virtual art show. So you can see the Moon Goddess, which is the one-on-one -on -one auction. Oh, so great. yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank we'll you. Pull that on the stream uh, now. Here we go. Yay, awesome. Thank you. So yes, you got it right. Absolutely. This job was created um, specifically in celebration of the Mid-Autumn Moon Festival, which is a very kind of prominent um, festival or you know, holiday in Asia. Um, especially in Chinese culture, uh, usually people gather their family um, because the moon also symbolized unity and full circle. So each year, this is a very important, um, almost like a Thanksgiving in the West. People get together with their family and share meals together and dumpling, which is also rounded. And that was created in the first place um, this September to celebrate the Autumn Moon Festival, which happened to be in the same week um, as Maker's Play's first ever virtual um, uh, art show on, on the on on the on the um, on the metaverse. And so this 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 particular piece was the inspiration of this entire job because I released it in September as a one-on-one -on -one piece and. Um, I was just so inspired by her. Um, and I, as you can see, there's a lot of really interesting uh, elements here that has symbolic, symbolic meaning. So the moon symbolized for unity. And then you have the phoenix slash peacock and the peony flower and also the moon bunny, um, as well as the plum blossom. So yes, this is coming from the, the autumn moon festival and Chinese culture or Asian culture. And that is such an amazing story, having that extra symbology tied into the piece here. And then, you know, as you've got it animated, so it's actually drawing the eye to a lot of the different pieces as the colors are alternating. Yeah, thank you. And we also have a special gift um, for this job, for this one-on-one -on -one auction. So the winner of the auction is going to also receive this alternative one-on-one -on -one, um, version uh, as as the uh, conclusion of the job and it as a surprise gift uh, we really this is the first time we announced this i really want to reward all my collectors um, whether new collectors or previous collectors or future collectors um to like every single time in the future i will always have some surprise you know whether it's air job or gifts sort of included in in the um, in the job itself. So the you know there will be in, more interaction with my collectors. So I'm super excited to announce this. How lucky is that being able to not only you know be the winner of a one on one auction, but then receive a drop of another one of one piece? <laughs> like oh my goodness can have them side by side you can alternate them there are so many things you could do having both pieces that's right candy i'm excited too <laughs> oh my goodness 
Ooh, and now what's next? So we have the one of one we've covered, but it looks like we have more pieces as well in the drop, which are not shown on the Maker's Place site yet. So we're getting a special early preview here. That's right. Thank you, Candy. Yeah. So we also have limited edition five pieces. There's actually um, two limited edition five pieces that I like to introduce. The first one is the Luna Stream of Thoughts. So this is kind of like a follow up version of the Moon Goddess. And, and if you kind of notice early on, the Moon Goddess is a full moon. This is a new moon. And the moon is also a very uh, interesting symbol, as you can see throughout the history of any culture, actually. Many, many cultures celebrate the moon. Um, but in particular, I think um, there is a lot of um, just a symbolic connotation or, uh, or symbolism tie in with the moon and the star. Um, the moon also represents feminine energy, um, it's sort of a in complementary of the sun because the sun always sort of sep like uh, relating to the idea of masculine energy and the moon also um, symbolized for intuition which is this sort of magic and known but mysterious um, sort of a, a vast uh, sort of more vast uh, I'd say uh, collective energy in some way and I was really interested to kind of tell you how um, I was guided to do this piece because this piece was literally created on the fly um, as I was going through the night and I was thinking, how can I represent um, feminine energy? It doesn't have to be female. It could be just, you know, as a pair with the masculine energy, but also it's like day and night because day is ruling by the sun and the night is also representing by the moon and so her hair in this case is also the night sky so it's kind of playing with the idea of the stream of the thoughts so her hair is also the night universe and you have the stars sort of shining through in her hair as decorations but it also represents this vast consciousness or unconsciousness that guiding every day's um, how we work, how we how we interact. And our conscious mind can interpret. So that's kind of the inspiration behind this particular piece. And the black cat here is also, I wanted to sort of rebrand black cat because it, it's interesting. And the color was also very much determined by the uh, the the season we're in, because this piece was literally created the week before the Halloween week. And we initially wanted to release the job on the Halloween week, which is last week. And that was the reason why that um, it was very seasonal. It sort of inspired by the autumn color or the Halloween color or the pumpkin color. Um, and the black cat in some way, I also want to kind of highlight it as in, in certain culture, especially I think in Asian cultures, parts of the Asian culture, we actually see uh, bl the black cat as a lucky symbol. And that's also something I kind of want to find a way to reinterpret um, some of the traditional thoughts about things. Um, and as you can see, this piece also has a special giveaway, which is the Luna Stream of Thought Day version, which is the white cat. So it's uh, sort of in company with the black cat as the, you know, day and night. Wow, and what an amazing pair we have there. I really, like when I was looking at you know the original drop version with the the black and the orange especially and you're talking about the night sky and intuition and kind of you know how that energy is really all tied together and you have the lines that are so very graceful you know, the lines of the sky the lines of you know her facial features and her hands and it's just such a stunning piece the way that you've taken all of these different representations and stylistically displayed them to create this very feminine graceful energy representing the night like that's that that is an, a very impressive 
collection <laughs> of, you know, symbology there. I'm speechless. I'm, I'm having trouble with my words because it's just, I, I'm so in love with these pieces. Thank you so much, Kenny. That's so nice of you. Uh, I, I really appreciate your, your uh, comment. And it's also very interesting if you look at her hair in this particular piece in comparison with the piece before. I mean, it's the same sort of structure, but by changing the color of her, of her hair into, you know, the blue color, um, here it's more like almost like a river uh, or ocean. Um, that's how interesting when we are using, um, you know, the color representation, and even it's the same shape. All of a it sudden, you kind of looking at it. Thank you. Yeah, you're kind of looking at it, and it's softer, whereas this one is very striking and very bold. Um, and And what's really interesting, that's also later on I found, when I look at the the day version, the the shape of the cat almost integrated into her face. Um, so it's almost like the same skin sort of variation or skin continuation. So the um, sort of the bum of the cat looks like her shoulder, right? It looks like she's looking um, to the camera through her shoulder and then if you look back to that piece um, before, it almost looked like she's wearing a black, you know, shirt and she's yeah, looking through like her shoulder too. <laughs> a shirt with like a big scarf or a cowl there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. amazing how the more you look at it, the more symbology you can actually find. This would be Thank a you. piece that people can look at, you know, repeatedly and find new meaning in it. And I think that's a sign of like really good art when you're able to find, you know, more meanings and perhaps situational. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Wow. It'll be fun. It will be fun to also see what everybody thinks. Like, you know, feel free to share your thoughts on the, on the text and chat. It'll be fun to also hear what the community thinks about the piece as well as we speak. Yes. Yes, I know that the community did note that, you know, your pieces are always so full of happy energy. And that's something that, you know, we're seeing throughout the ones you've shared so far, but also historically, like you definitely the way that you've mastered the, you know, colors and the symbology have been able to create pieces that really resonate with people, you know, on a more emotional level. So that's and, and here we have a cherry blossom friend. So let's, <laughs> let's move it into there and see what this one brings us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Candy. Um, my name actually means joy and creativity. So yi means happy or joy in Chinese language and ying means creativity, or creative. So I guess that's perfect kind of for you. Part, of, part of my, uh, my uh, sort of personal statement, if you will. How perfect is that? Wow. Thank you. Love it. So tell us about this cherry blossom friends. And I would say I am definitely partial to purples as a color. Like those are the ones that I find myself, excuse me, most drawn to. So this one, I'm like looking at it and like she's got the same type of wink, but with the flowers, it almost feels like a little bit more kind of playful, sassy. What's what's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That was that was uh, that was what I'm going for. Play for and sassy. There it is. Uh, that is definitely what I'm going for. So thank you for getting the keywords out there. Uh, we haven't even sort of uh, do our uh, rehearsal. <laughs> you gotta just get the get the uh, the 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 the, uh, the the key uh, feeling I want to convey. Yeah, the cherry blossom is actually. Um, as a as a piece to honor also the Asian culture. So the cherry blossom also known as Sakura in Japan, and they are very delicate um, white or white or pink flowers uh, from the cherry blossom tree. And it is also one of the most beautiful spring flower. They represent the beginning of spring, and it's also a time of renewal and a hope of a productive growing year. Um, the cherry blossom flowers are native to Asia, and can be found in Japan, South Korea, North Korea, India, and China. And nowadays, um, they have been 
bought uh, all over the world and can be found growing in many countries like other countries as well. Like for example, San Francisco, I actually saw cherry blossom uh, tree uh, during the cherry blossom festival in San Francisco every spring. Um, so the cherry blossoms um, have very deep symbolic meaning. In China, they represent the feminine mystique, strength and sexuality and beauty. The flower also are very much, I think most cherished in Japan with the, the blossoms found in all aspects of Japanese culture from film to poetry and also even paintings. So many Japanese people believe that cherry blossom flower are the metaphors for human existence. Um, from the sort of belief, um, because it has a very brief life, very, very short lifespan, um, which literally only in two or three weeks, um, they're, they're gone. So the blossom time is less than a month. Um, people always, you know, sitting down the tree and enjoy, have a picnic. That's usually sort of part of the Japanese cultural and, uh, and, and it's also very beautiful and delicate, but it also represent how, you know, fragile and transient of our lives. So that is also a way to intend to remind people, especially the audience who are looking at it, you know, who are living, just enjoying the present and living in the present when you can, because the flower has such a short lifespan but every year it's here to remind the people, you know, beauty exists, but sometimes it also have a very, very short period of time. Um, so that's also something I wanted kind of to remind people to not taking life for granted because we only have a very short period of time on the earth. So get the most out of it. <laughs> and um, the reason why I also called it the cherry blossom friends is as you can see, there's also a magpie and a dragonfly. Uh, so here, that's also something I am very interested in sort of using the symbology of the animals or nature uh, to remind people of something that, you know, they have it sort of surrounding them every day, whether it's insects or, or um, you know, animals like birds. So the magpie symbolize uh, the intelligence and wit and the dragonfly symbolizes um, sort of um, going past self and, and created illusions and that limited our growth and ability to change it. So it also means the hope, the change and the love. Um, it is a piece to remind us life is short, um, share it with others who brings you joy, intelligence, wit, change, hope, and also love. And what an amazing message. We have uh, actually one of our community members noted that this is their daughter's favorite one so far. They've been watching along because their daughter said that it looks like she knows how to have fun. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, it's, it's always important to have fun. That's, uh, that's what, it, what makes life um, enjoyable to live, right? Yes. And now that we've got the colors reversed, this, I feel like when I've seen in the past the cherry blossom art, I feel like this is the color scheme that I've most frequently seen it in, kind of that pale pink and like, you know, the like kind of muted pastel green. So now we, I, I feel like we've taken that, you know, very joyful, playful image and kind of perhaps gone a more traditional route with this mirrored image, which is the bonus surprise gift. Yes, yes. And it's also a fun sort of contrast with the um, the piece, which is the night piece. And th this is also the reason why we called it the Illuminary, because it was also playing with my last name. We have the LU there. So the, you know, the main piece that's actually uh, available on Maker's Place to purchase uh, always have the, the night background which is also the continuation with my previous job, which is the Makers of Magic. For those of you have seen that piece before with the unicorn, the phoenix, and the griffin, and uh, the winged lion, for example, and, and the pegasus, right? And all the pieces actually have black background. And the white background uh, piece, this actually was the OG piece, the original, 
piece of of the cherry blossom friends. I initially was showing to the Makers Place team member that I was working with. So I was showing this to Chase and ask him, you know, what do you think? And and he said, I really love the day version. I really hope that you could include it. You can include the day version in the job. And that's where we kind of decided, why don't we just do this as a bonus gift um, for the for the folks that who are going to purchase the um, the the night version as a sort of a pair. So you you have both the day and the night. Sorry, I had a brief connection issue there. So I like the fact that, you know, as you were explaining, you were tying this to your, your previous job. And I have those kind of pulled up on my other screen looking at these because those are super magical and, and having that night theme continuation is really fabulous for your collectors i think because then they'll be able to take the pieces that you have here and combine them with the other pieces that you have in a collection and have that cohesion across the two yeah absolutely candy you got it that is that is absolutely magical because we're even seeing i'm looking at it and um let's see i'm gonna share it really quick we can see the previous you know kind of the blacks with the oranges and now um i was i was gonna pull yours back up uh, but having those blacks and the oranges um in the night sky you know the, having that theme is so amazing let's see and so we've got the griffin there as well looking at those uh, it's it's your ability to create magic graphically is absolutely uncanny. I love it. Thank you, Candy. I'm sorry I accidentally uh, closed my my uh, my window to see what you have there. <laughs> no worries. Let's see. We'll pull yours back up now. I am backing up. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And so we've got. Gosh, these are just so beautiful. Having these cherry blossoms and. You know, the reminder that life is short and people need to really kind of focus on what's important. Get that vibe from these. Absolutely. Yeah, focus on what, what's important and also focus on the present moment and the people you're with in the very present, the people and the surrounding environment um, that you having the ability to enjoy and interact with. It's amazing having the the people as part of this as a reminder too, because I know that you've mentioned you don't normally use. People are the focus here. Good. There we go. Um, we'll, we'll look at the pomegranate here. <laughs> because that, that's very interesting, the fact that you have this caption, you know, we've got the hands, we've got the string there with the, you know, the alternating lights, but this teardrop that seems perhaps a little bit ominous until you read the caption. <laughs> Tell us about this in the process here. Thank you, Candy. Yeah, that was a very fun piece that I created. Uh, and it was actually created by a, a really uh, personal experience because um, as you all know, um, you know, at the moment in the uh, North hemisphere, we're experiencing uh, fall or autumn here. For those of you who live in the southern hemisphere right now, it's obviously your spring. But uh, in majority of the folks that in the in the north hemisphere, northern hemisphere, we're experiencing fall or autumn. And pomegranate is the fruit that is usually sort of seasonal fruit we eat uh, around this time of the year. And it just so happened that I was the other day I was eating pomegranate. I was like popping the seeds and everything. And um, and after I ate it, I went to the bathroom to wash my hands, and I realized there was like red, you know, uh, colored drops on my face. I thought it was blood for a second, <laughs> and then I was like, "Wait a minute, it's not blood. It's pomegranate juice." And that was a moment that I realized how interesting our mind interpret things or 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 just situations through our experience and through you know, what we see um, in a more sort of uh, experienced based scenario. 
And it's also interesting, um, uh, as I did the statement of the job, uh, this job or this even this entire uh, collection is a visual experiment with semiotics, which is the study of signs and symbols, their usage and their interpretation. And so here I use the color red, black and white, uh, which is very simple, right, uh, to create this visual interplay and the interaction between the concept of all these shapes that we see on a daily basis. And your eye might be drawn to the red teardrop shape on her face and then interpret that's a drop of blood and because it's according to your sort of uh, normal visual experience. But if you read the title, which is, um, it's not blood, it's pomegranate juice, um, it's, in a way, I think it's very much inspired by the surrealism movement. One of my favorite artists um, throughout my life is Rene Magritte. Um, I also love Dali, but I particularly love Rene Magritte. For those of you who um, don't know, he has this really um, sort of iconic piece. I'm sure you probably have seen it. It's called The, um, the, uh, the Treachery of Images, uh, a.k.a. This is not a pipe, right? So cut out a minute. That, so. Uh -huh. I'm sorry to interrupt. It looks like we had cut out for a moment there. We uh, heard that you love Renee Magritte, and then there was a yes. blank spot. Okay, um, I'll just repeat what I said. Thanks, Candy. Um, yeah, so Renee Magritte has this very famous piece, I'm sure uh, those of you uh, probably have already seen it, uh, which is This Is Not a Pipe. Um, the uh, I think the English name of the piece is called The Treachery of Images which is kind of a, a visual that consists of a drawing of a pipe. Um, and then there's a line in, in, in French says, this is not a pipe. And, and the painting is a visual trick, which the writing invites us to recognize that what appears to be a pipe is not really a pipe. It's just an illusion and nothing more than a painting on a flat surface. And similarly, uh, this piece, which is by making the title, it's not blood, it's pomegranate juice. I want to invite the audience to step out of their conditional interpretation according to the norms, which are the majority societal beliefs, and step into a new and whimsical reality, um, which intend to be a invitation to go to this place of playfulness, um, and uh, study to question what you see and uh, in, like uh, interplay of the re reality and also the sort of imaginary. So, and speaking of that kind of whimsical interpretation, what does their alternative color show us? That is a great question. So I'm gonna show the alternative color, which is the morning version or the, um, you know, the blue version, the blue and pink version. And the title is, it's not a teardrop, it's blue paint. <laughs> Goodness. So we have the same kind of thing where you would generally assume that it would be a teardrop being the blue color and then switching the reality. So people have to reinterpret. Yeah. And it's also interesting if you think about the idea of how we perceive colors and shapes. Normally, if you look at, you know, any of the drawing, um, any of the depiction uh, in the sort of a 2D um, sphere. Uh, when we see, for example, this blue teardrop, we know our brain interpret this as water, as in this case, because it's also on her face, our brain interprets, okay, that must be a teardrop. This is sort of almost like automatic reaction according to you know, our existing interpretation or experience. But if you look at the real teardrop <laughs> or even the real water uh, uh, of the ocean, if you kind of look, you know, you, you, you have a spoon of the water, it's, it's transparent, it's not blue, but because of the reflection of the water absorbs the light and our brain kind of looking at it and think that's blue. And this is the reason why we kind of have this historical representation of water drop as in the blue color, uh, which is not really what we see in the reality, right? That is 
absolutely true. Being able to play off all of those social and cultural, you know, learnings as, as people have those kind of ingrained into their experience and then have them reassessed is, is a very interesting dynamic that we have going on here with the art. I love it. Thank you. I Thank love you. it. And I would say, I know that like, I'm looking at the clock and I know that we're getting close to the end time here, but I think there was uh, yet another piece that we were going to go over here. Oh yeah. So this is the, the last limited edition piece. Uh, there's 10 limited edition piece, uh, which is the Winky Magic. Uh, it's also a really fun sort of interplay of shapes as well, uh, inspired by the Halloween, as you know, and also the flower of the morning glory, which is another really uh, sort of well-respected flower uh, symbolized for the hopes and dreams. Um, but it's also a witch's hat. So we have the night version, which is this one. And we also have the day version, which has the same color as the cherry blossom flower girl, uh, which re really fun is, you know, when you have the color change, for example, this one versus the day version, it has a complete sort of a different vibe to it. So that's also something I was very fascinated when I was creating these jobs. These are absolutely amazing. We've got like the fun, witchy, winky, like the little ties. I love this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know that we're sort of almost about to be uh, towards the end. Um, I, I also just want to tell the community how serendipitous this, this this interview is, because this is the first time I'm working directly with Candy. And uh, and I was just telling Candy, uh, whose name is Candy, that this entire collection, uh, the drop is going to be dropped tomorrow. And tomorrow, which is the 4th of November here in the United States, uh, happened to be the National Candy Day. <laughs> How so. perfect is that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just a, a serendipity and, uh, you know, kismet are meant to be. I absolutely love this. And this is an open to existing Maker's Place collectors. So if you own one of your pieces already, then you'll be able to purchase one of these? Uh, yes, absolutely. This is going to be a raffle. Uh, this is open to my existing Makerspace collectors and also artists. Uh, we will do the detail announcement, um, hopefully either today or tomorrow for the raffle details. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be a $1 raffle. So uh, super excited uh, to, and I hope you're gonna win, Candy. <laughs> I am so excited. I will definitely be keeping my eyes on the site tomorrow as the auctions open up to try to snag one of these because like, as you mentioned, it's so serendipitous. Like how perfect is this? Here we are. I, I was speechless when I, when I realized Candy is your real name. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is this has been so much fun, Candy. Thank you so much for hosting me. This has been an absolute blast. And as always, we love having you here in the whale community and appreciate you coming to hang out and share your newest works with us. We will, let's see, let me link in the Discord again, your luminary drop link so that way people can pull that up. And I'll pull it up here. So that way we are following. So one, one day in eight hours, like we're ready. Yay. Thank you. Thank so you very much. Ready. Thank you. Um, I will also pull up, let's see, your Twitter. We'll drop that into the chats for everybody to make sure that they're following you along. And making sure to keep tabs on not just the luminary drop coming up, but all of your developments that you do, because you are such an amazing artistic inspiration. And so being able to follow along as you're, you know, shaping our culture in a lot of ways is, you know, a, a very cool thing. So everybody fill in your email address. Don't miss out on the drop. And Ian, thank you so much again for coming to the whale community for this interview. Oh my goodness, the pleasure is all my candy. I so appreciate you and I so appreciate the community. Um, thank you for having me and I hope that we will be doing more fun uh, and meaningful jobs together in the near future.
We absolutely will. Thank you all. We will see you again next time. See you soon. Take care, Candy, and take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.